Hello, welcome to the North Dakota Geological Survey Medora Public Fossil Dig. Uh, if you're watching this, you are in the right spot if you're going to the Medora Fossil Dig with us uh, today or sometime in the near future. We are going to be digging up in Paleocene rocks. Uh, we're going to go through a little bit of that in a minute, but first some introductions. My name is Jeff Person. I'm a paleontologist with the North Dakota Geological Survey located in Bismarck. Today you will likely be joined by myself and possibly one or two other paleontologists also from the North Dakota Geological Survey. They are Dr. Clint Boyd, who is the curator of the fossil collection, and Ms. Becky Barnes, who is the lab manager and preparator of the fossil collection. So without further ado, let's just jump into the rest of the presentation. In this picture, you can see one young high school student from Century High School in Bismarck holding up a very large, what is a crocodile tooth. This is likely the largest crocodile tooth we have ever found at the site. And it will be coming up a little bit later in the presentation. So just mark how large that is. That's probably an inch, inch and a half long. For those of you who are hoping to find dinosaurs today, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Dinosaurs, at the time these rocks were laid down, had been extinct for a number of million years. So we will not be finding any dinosaurs at the site today. In this image, you can see some representatives of animals that we find in the Medora area. On the upper left is a swallowtail butterfly. On the lower left are footprints, likely from a large cat, either a bobcat or a mountain lion. And on the right hand side is a, is a small rattlesnake. We do find these in the Medora area. This particular one was recovered and removed from the fossil dig site. Please be careful. For those of you that might be arachnophobic, we do have spiders on the site. They're usually small and don't bother anybody. And the other arachnid that we do find on the site are scorpions. A lot of people don't realize that we have scorpions in North Dakota. We do, as evidenced by that picture on the right that was taken on the site. They're usually very small, not aggressive, but they do blend into the rocks quite well, so you might not notice it. The lesson here is please don't put your hands anywhere you can't see. Be careful when you're removing rocks. They might contain hidden surprises. In this slide is an adult and a baby shorthorn lizard, also known as horny toads. We do find both the adults and babies near or on the site, so please be careful. These animals are not harmful and nothing to be afraid of. Now that we've covered all of the animals that we might find, we can start talking about some of the paleontology, but first we must talk about the rocks. The rocks found above the fossil layer are called the Sentinel Butte Formation. The rocks we will be digging in are from the Bullion Creek Formation, which are below the Sentinel Butte Formation. These two rocks are separated by a very prominent red layer called a clinker. This clinker is caused by coal seams burning and baking the above clay into a kind of terracotta. This image shows that prominent clinker layer. Above, you can see the Sentinel Butte Formation in the background, and below in the foreground is the Bullion Creek Formation. This is where the fossil layer is. When we get to the fossil site, there might be a little physical labor that needs to be done. This is often just work done with pickaxes and shovels. Don't worry. If you don't feel physically capable, there's plenty of people to share the load. Children, often curious about how this works, like to participate. Near the site is a shade tent. Please take advantage of this shade tent if you are feeling hot. We'll often sit under here to take short breaks and when we eat lunch. This picture shows what the site looked like in about 2006. Notice the two prominent mounds in the foreground those are about to disappear. This picture shows what the site looked like in 2010. Notice those two big mounds are gone. They were removed by heavy machinery to expose more of the fossil layer. Here's another shot from 2010. You can see on both the left and the right hand side of the image that we're beginning to dig towards the center. Notice all of the water in the site. If it rains or is too wet, we won't be able to dig. This picture was taken in 2014 
and you can see what a mess the site is when it rains. In the background, you can see Becky trying to drain the site with a shovel. This site takes about a day to two days to dry out when wet. One reason we can't dig when it's wet is for the safety of not only the people, but also of the fossils. There's a very steep hill that goes up to the site that can be dangerous when wet. The fossils, when wet, can be very soft and fragile, so we don't want to dig anything out of the ground when they are wet. Therefore, if it's too wet at the site, we can't dig. We'll have to wait for the sun to come out and dry it out. We will have some on-site training when we get to the site, but here's a quick overview of what you're going to be doing when you dig at the site. Step one is to reveal a large portion just above the, the fossil layer. In the foreground, you can see the start of that process. In this photo, you can see a very large section of cleared off layer just above the fossil layer. We like to work in large, large sections so you can see what it is that you're doing when you come down on top of the fossil layer. In this picture, you can see again how big of an area we uncover. This smooth layer just above the fossil producing layer is called a slick inside. It's a geologic term, not to be confused with the water slip and slide. This is very different. In this image, you can see how much of a large area we've uncovered to that slick inside. This will be worked by hand now down to the fossil producing layer. Here's Becky now working with hand tools and her gloved hands, removing that slick inside just above the fossil producing layer. The fossil producing layer is that reddish brownish layer you can see on the right hand, just above her hand. Again, still using hands and hand tools to get down to that fossil producing layer. She's using her brush to gently sweep away all of the non-fossiliferous material to clean the site. This is an important step in order to keep fossils from breaking. Here is a final product of all that removal of the top layer. Exposed in the middle of the image is the entire fossil producing layer. This is what will be collected in the next few moments. Here you can see two of our most common fossils we find at the Medora Public Fossil Dig. Two large coprolites, one on the left and one on the right. I'm often asked, who done it? All I can tell you is, it wasn't a mouse. Here, one of our diggers is using paleontologist wrapping paper to wrap up that fine looking coprolite. Here is a series of images detailing all the different steps that we take to get a fossil out of the ground safely. On the upper left, you can see the fossil has just first been exposed. Next, you can see the fossil is just starting to be more and more uncovered. We're trying to find the edges of it. Next, you can see we found the edges and have worked down below the fossil producing layer. On the lower left, we've started to dig a trench around it. This trench might be an inch, inch and a half deep, depending on what kind of bone it is. Finally, the last two images on the bottom show the jacket being covered and labeled and then flipped. We find other things than just vertebrates at the site. Here is a fossil pine cone. You can see the star radiating pattern coming out from the middle. Here is a pike jaw that we found at the site a number of years ago. You can see at least two teeth on the bottom of that jaw, as well as the sockets for all the rest. Here, above the knife, you can see a nice, large crocodile tooth. Not as large as the one from that first slide, but that's still pretty big. Here's the animal that that crocodile tooth likely came from, a large crocodile called Borealisuchus. Although I don't know how large this alligator is, Borealisuchus could likely get up between 12 and 15 feet long. At the end of this dissecting probe, you can see a small fragment of turtle. Here are two bones still in the fossil layer that we found at the site. On the right is a large piece of turtle, and the left is a vertebrae from a bowfin. Here's a reconstruction of one of the turtles we find at the site. On the left, in the circle, is a good-sized champsosaur rib. Champsosaurs are animals very similar to crocodile. 
If you know what a gharial is from Asia, something very similar to that. Here are some more fragments and pieces from that same animal called the Champsosaur. Here's a beautiful rendition of what this artist thought Champsosaur might have looked like. If you've ever visited the North Dakota Heritage Center in Bismarck, you'll recognize this exhibit. This is, again, that same Champsosaur that we find prominently at the Medora Public Fossil Dig Site. Now we need to get into what we do with the rest of the material that you don't obviously see bones in. The fossil producing layer is a very dark, black, very organic rich layer. Although you might not see them, it still contains dozens if not hundreds of fossils too small for your naked eye to see. The next steps after the large fossils have been collected is to collect the rest of that producing layer. It's scraped into buckets, as you can see here, and brought back to the lab. That material that we've collected at the fossil site is then what we call screen washed, simply just putting the mud and muck into boxes with screens on the bottom, and the rock is sifted out and the fossils and harder rocks remain. Once that material is dried, it's put under a microscope and all of the fossils are picked out. Everything in this image is a fossil. There are teeth, and vertebrae, and even a fossil penny. Occasionally, we get a very exciting find. There's a fossil in this image. Can you spot it? Here is a small mammal jaw within the red circle. Did you spot it? We've magnified the picture quite a bit. You can see the teeth on the left and the lower part of the jaw on the right. Here's that same jaw on the tip of Clint's finger. Notice how small it is. It's from an animal called Leptacodon, which is in the mole and shrew family. Do you remember that large crocodile tooth I told you to keep in your mind at the very beginning? Well, that's the same tooth on the right, and there's the Leptacodon jaw on the left. Notice the size difference. Believe it or not, these two fossils were found on the same day, only 15 minutes apart. As we continue to dig at the site, once you hit all of these white shells, called paper clams, you're at the bottom of the fossil producing layer. It's due to these paper clams that we know the water in this area was slow moving if not perfectly still. Today, paper clams live in that kind of environment with little to no current. In the middle of this image, just above the paintbrush, you can see the impression of a branch. The larger ones are difficult to collect and we have collected some of the smaller ones, but sometimes all we can do is make a plaster cast of it and collect that. One of the dangers of having a fossil producing layer so close to the surface is the invasion of plant roots. These plant roots can dig down and wrap themselves around the fossils looking for nutrients. Please, if you spy these in your digging area, don't pull them out. Call us over and we'll help you cut them. If you pull them out, you could accidentally break up the fossil you're working on. Finally, here's a reconstruction of what we think Western North Dakota looked like at the time the Medora fossil site was active. In the foreground, you can see turtles and fish. There's some mammals in the beach in the background, a bird. If you look closely, you can spy a crocodile way in the background. Here's a beautiful shot of the North Dakota Heritage Center in Bismarck. If you're in the Bismarck area passing through, please stop by. We're open seven days a week and we're always free. Some of the fossils that we found in the Bedora site have helped to build the exhibit that's dedicated to this time period. Lastly, and as a reminder, have fun. There's a porta potty on the site and a shade tent as well. Also, no vaping or smoking on the site. Go up towards the vehicles for that. Please be courteous to others while you're at the site. We ask that you don't talk on your cell phones at the site. Nobody wants to hear about Uncle Bob's knee surgery. Texting is fine though. We encourage you to take photos, but if you post them on social media, please tag us. We're on all the major social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just tag us with at NDGS Paleo. Once again, thanks and have fun.